there are a few different ways that you can use uh, integration uh, within contextual problems, and this is just one of those. And we're so we're going to look at an application of definite integrals here when we're talking about the rate of change and the initial function. So let's start. Uh, so we've got if we start with a function r of t, we know that the derivative of r of t, r prime, is going to be our rate of change of some of that function, whatever that is, some function r. So that means the original function r is the quantity uh, of whatever it is we're looking at. Maybe it's an item, maybe it's an object, maybe it's a, some scenario, some bacteria, some uh, who knows what. But all of this is going to be measured with respect to some value of time. So, you know, measurement of time, be it days, hours, uh, seconds, whatever the case might be. Now, this is our normal way that we, we would normally think of this, is that we would start with our function r and we'd go to d the derivative uh, r prime. But we could also start uh, with the, the derivative r of t, and we could go up to the original function r, uh, r of t. So in this notation, uh, it sounds kind of confusing, but we're just using a different letter to note to, for the notation that we're going to change from the rate of change to the original function. So one way to write this is if we're using the derivative, we know that we would take the original function over those two times. This is the, the fundamental theorem of calculus. Or if we use the orange notation, we're going from time one to time two from r of t, uh, and that's going to be uh, equal to r of t2 minus r of t1. Again, to reiterate this first part, this is the rate of change uh, over a certain amount of time. And again, to reiterate, this is the quantity uh, of the item or the object or the scenario over that same amount of time. So not the, the rate at which it's changing, but the actual change in the quantity of those values. And whether we're using the gray equations or these orange equations, it's still the same things hold true. We're just using a different notation uh, based on however the, the problem is presented to us. Speaking of problems, here's a big example for us. The cultures of bacteria have an initial population of 100 bacteria. The rate of change or the rate at which the number of bacteria changes over a month can be modeled by this function, r of t, equaling e to the 0 0.26 t power where r is the rate of change in the number of bacteria on day t. And so we want to find the number of bacteria 20 days after the culture was started. So first we can note that this says the rate at which the number of bacteria changes. So that means we are looking at the rate of change, right? But notice also that the notation that was set up for us uses this side over here. So we're going to use the orange notation for, for our function here. And also notice that it says the initial population is 100 bacteria. So the quantity of bacteria that we have at time zero is 100. All right, so here is our equation from zero to 20, e to the 0 0.26t to the, with respect to t. All right, um, so this is the change uh, that happens from 0 to 20, from day 0 to day 20, or from 0 to 20 days. And what we're looking for is the uh, function. So we're going to have to use u substitution for this. So the u substitution, we're going to have to look for the inner function, and that is the 0 0.26t. We take the derivative of that, which is 0 0.26. Uh, we need to get dt by itself. So we... Uh, do some manipulation here, and we get dt is equal to 1 over 0 0.26 du. So now this u can go into this function, and we're left with 0, 1 over 0 0.26, the integral of zero from 0 to 20 of e to the u du, and easy enough, we can integrate that, which is e to the u power multiplied by our constant 1 over 0 0.26. But of course, we have to substitute our u back in. So we just put that back in there. We're still going from 0 to 20. So now we know we're going to go r of 20 minus r of 0. 
uh, using our fundamental theorem of calculus. So uh, as we start to integrate here, in, or sorry, as we start to substitute here, we've got 20 substituted into the integrated function and 0 substituted in, subtracting 0 from the 20. Plug it into our calculator, we get 6.97.2 or 697.2 for uh, day 20, and we've got 3.8 at, uh, at day 0. And so we have 693.4. Now keep in mind that this is the amount of change, the amount of change from time 0 to time 20. So it's not saying that at, at time 0 we had... 3.8 uh, because we already know or we already know at time zero we have 100 bacteria that means as we move from zero to one we have 3.8 uh, bacteria so in in the course of that time so over the course of the 20 days from zero to 20 we have 693.4 bacteria so clearly initial plus change is going to equal our total value on day 20 so we're going to take our initial 100, we're going to add in our 693.4 that we calculated from using our calculator, and we end up with our total of 793.4 bacteria um, on day 20. Now, you know, if we wanted to be a little bit more uh, precise with this, we would say that it's 693 bacteria because we, you know, we don't really have partial bacteria. I guess you could have partial bacteria as it's splitting or or uh, multiplying however it does. But, uh, you know, maybe a, a better answer might be 793 bacteria. But here's one way that you can use definite integrals uh, within a context. Sometimes you start at the rate of change uh, and you work backwards to find an actual value uh, within your, uh, the, 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 I don't want to say original function because the function you're given might be considered the original function, but, um, your quantity function, let's call it that, your quantity function. So I uh, hope this helps uh, kind of set the stage for you um, and run through an example for you, and I'll talk to you soon.